between Luzon and Taiwan. The Babuyan Islands uh, are in sight of the northern end of Luzon, and then there's a fair-sized gap between that and the Batanes. In uh, clear weather, uh, you can see from one to, to the next in that there's uh, most of them, or some of them are high islands, and you can uh, see the top of them. Uh, the Batanes uh, are smaller, somewhat smaller islands than the Babuyans. Uh, there are uh, several of them. The farthest north of these is Itbayat, which is, uh, until they got an airstrip there, was extremely difficult to reach because there were virtually no good beaches there. Uh, and the water was always rough so that there, there was only a very short period each year that you could get in there by boat so that uh, Itbayat was really isolated. Itbayat was a high island and somewhere uh, we think or I think around seven, eight hundred years ago there was a small movement from Itbayat to Boto Tobago as called in English uh, Easter Island uh, actually in, in one of the Taiwan languages, uh, a small island to the south east, south southeast of the tip of uh, Taiwan. Uh, and both the people on Itbayat and on, what, what's the name of this? Well, we can call it Lanyu. Lanyu. Yeah. Uh, recognized that the people from Lanyu came from Itbayat, that they're related. And they were off and on in contact until the Spanish came in and this stopped the contact. But they still, on both sides, remember that they're related uh, to each other. Uh, the work on, on Itbayat only started, I suppose, uh, may, maybe 10 years ago. There had been no work there before just because of the, the difficulty of getting there by, by boat. And there's been a, a fair bit there since. Uh, and a number of sites have been found. Uh, it's uh, an interesting and long-term project. Uh, you would best get information from that, uh, from some of our students who worked up there, from, from Victor Paz. Uh, from others in that uh, uh, I have not been on, I've been to, to Bosco, to the uh, the capital of the Batanes, and actually uh, did a little bit of work on a jar burial there a long time ago. But uh, I don't know any of the work on the Itbayat directly myself, whereas uh, several of our students are very well acquainted with it, and uh, um, Bong Dizon. Uh, who has worked there with, with most of this could, could give you lots more information. He, he and uh, Peter Bellwood have written, published uh, several articles about their work, too. We received a text message uh, last night uh, that uh, Edwin, one of the students with the team, reported that uh, Neferite, Jade. Okay. Samples, uh, they also found corded ware. Yeah, the, uh, uh, it's long been a question on where did the, uh, the jade come from that is, has been found on a number of sites in the Philippines, in Taiwan, and elsewhere. And Bayer, the originator of archaeology in the Philippines, felt that there must be a source for a, a white jade somewhere in Batangas because of the large number of jade artifacts he'd found in Batangas, just uh, not, not far here from Manila. But uh, well, I suppose now, seven, eight years ago, a jade source was discovered about halfway up the east coast uh, of uh, Taiwan. And it's been identified, and uh, they they say that there, there are certain this jade has been exported, not the artifacts, but the jade uh, to the Batanes Islands, and that actually in the Batanes Island, in Itbayat itself, 
they've found workshops where they were working with these jade and working on typical Philippine style uh, artifacts in jade, not like Taiwan style, but like Philippine style. And some of these have been located uh, in the sites in Palawan. Uh, actually, it appears one or two may have gotten back to the mainland uh, and that this was uh, the actual stone tools after they'd been manufactured on Itbayat uh, were traded, uh, some of them back to the north, uh, uh, others uh, into northern Luzon and, and around. Uh, and uh, I, I say that, oh, this is another indication of the trade network of the New Santel Maritime Trading and Communication Network. I got it there. Uh, <clears throat> and this is a typical sort of uh, trade networking scheme of uh, just trading uh, dried fish, whatever they needed up there for the jade, which was wanted uh, elsewhere, uh, and that they had quite an active trade with, uh, with bringing this jade down and then moving the artifacts uh, around to these other places where they've been found. And what can you say about the corded ware that has been found there? The which? It's a cord wear. Oh, uh, you had early corded wear, cord marked pottery uh, on the coastal areas along South China. Uh, you had a basket marked to, to the south. Uh, the corded wear uh, came over, got into Taiwan, a little bit into northern Luzon, not much. Uh, you don't find it in the central Philippines. You get a little bit of cordmark pottery down in, in Mindanao uh, and uh, on out uh, in, into the islands off, off of New Guinea. So that this is another indication, as I see it, that there were uh, quite different routes of, of movements, uh, of methods of manufacture of pottery and so on uh, from uh, uh, Vietnam from, from the south, uh, bringing similar stuff uh, into Borneo and up into the Philippines from the south, uh, from farther north, uh, including Taiwan, the Batanes probably, uh, and the northern, very northern end of, of Luzon, but not into the central part of Luzon. Uh, so that this distribution of quarry is uh, is distinct uh, and me shows that there's movement through 